just fitting in a bit of unboxing. Our new uh, handheld radio. So it's uh, got a few fancy features. It's waterproof, uh, up to a depth of one meter for 30 minutes, but it floats. And when it hits the water, it also starts flashing. 11 hours of battery life. Seems all right. And the cool thing is USB charging. I saw some of the second hand ones at the boat jumble. And these old, big, chunky batteries, you took them out, took them in. So it's just got a nice little USB cable. The way the world's going. So I'm gonna plug that into charge now. And then I'm just gonna spend my spare time while Kelly's away gigging again. Just, you know, listening to uh, marine radio traffic. Kids in bed. Well, supposed to be, not exactly. I've got about half an hour to an hour of usable daylight left. And I've spent 20 minutes of it looking for glue. It's not the way to get this boat finished. With only 73 days left until we sail off on our 10 week sabbatical, we quickly realise that this challenge is going to be very different to the launch countdown. Back then, we weren't living aboard. We could just leave tools out, we could start working on a job without having to tidy up breakfast things and kids' crayons and toys and clothes and anything else that we're having to tidy up at the moment before we can start work. But this boat is a home now. This week, the kids had their friends over to play, which was so lovely. We took them out in the dinghy, we had food with a view, and they had a lovely time crafting and playing. They had brilliant fun. But this left Hugh with a limited amount of space in which to work and build. The house is full of excitable children doing crafting. Crafty children, you could say. So I come and uh, lock myself in the back cabin and doing a bit of thinking. I've just got uh, this out. Do some calculations. This is something I can do in the back cabin here. Uh, in my own little isolation bubble. So I'm gonna do some measuring, work out how I'm gonna install this uh, ram for the autopilot unit, how it's gonna go under the bed here. That's the motor, the pump. Uh, and then that goes round, links up with a load of fluid and pipes to this thing here, to this ram. And then this section here goes in and out and pushes the tiller. Uh, and this is a little header tank for the fluid. What I've got is this diagram here, which shows me the range of motion of this tiller head here. So when the boat's going straight ahead, I want it to be here, and then it's gonna to go to port and starboard, move back and forth. So I've now got to take these measurements, do a bit of measury pokery calculation uh, under the bed here. Ooh, it sounds exotic. It's not like, not that exotic. So there is a handy bracket uh, here that looks to have been left over from previous uh, autopilot system. Not only that, the previous autopilot system also had this extra tiller. So this quadrant here is um, what the cables run through for the steering. And then we've got this extra tiller arm on top here, which is not attached to anything, but they've got these two holes in it. And that is left over from whatever was here previously. The measurements don't quite work out for me to use the existing uh, wall mount position, but it, that, but the tiller arm itself, the big chunk of stainless steel, is perfectly to the job. It's brilliant. It's already got it. I mean, that's that's got to be a couple hundred quid's worth of stainless work e easily, if not more. Custom work that's already there, built, ready to go. So that's great. Um, that's all fine. I have to drill an extra hole in that thing in the position that we want to match the instructions in this manual. Um, and then I've got to remount the ram in a slightly different place. I think. Rather than being here, it's actually going to be about where my fist is. There, that's going to be the pivot point of that. And then that's going to go across to where that is. Um, so what I'll probably do is make a rough mock-up out of timber of a mount and try fastening it and seeing how it looks. Meanwhile, in the other room... So my friend Sophie here to visit today! And we always wanted people to come and play the piano. Oh, and uh, yeah. Sophie hasn't played for how long, did you say? Like 12 years. 12 years. Morning pass. So strange to see myself. And look at the tiny little seat as well. It's not even a proper seat. And it's no, not in tune at all. But apart from that. Right, you need to cut out all the bits that go wrong. Okay. Remember, 
Well, that's our first. That's our first thing. That's our first person coming on board hey. in our series of uh, play. I come and play our piano. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. Yay. So I've got almost as far as I can get today. Um, I'm just going to remove this tiller now. I've just, I just started undoing the bolts. Um, this needs a hole going through here. It needs to be 20 mil. Um, and there's a fabricator around the corner that I'm trying to get to know. People said they're really good. I've got a few little jobs, including this sort of stuff. So I'm going to go and drop it into them and you know, start with a couple of small jobs, see if they're all right. And if they are good, then I may get them to help me do a very big job. It just also occurred to me that because this uh, ram has a much smaller throw than obviously whatever previous ram was in here, it is possible for it to go lengthways. So if I change the angle of this, so it's coming out sideways, the ram could be going on this trajectory here. And that has a couple of benefits. Um, one is I could probably mount it on this very, very structurally sound thing that's already been installed. As, and that's already the right height. I mean, literally all I have to do is just bolt it in, which would be amazing. And the other thing about that is I could then also create two massive storage boxes here and here. But I'm gonna have a little think about it, a little look at that as a possibility, because if that is indeed a possibility and it's doable, it gives, it gives us an extra few square foot of storage space. I mean, not vast and maybe not worth the hassle. But I'm gonna think about it, that's what I do. Hugh has a brilliant brain and he solves lots of problems by sitting and thinking and imagining and working the problem through. However, this is a rare occasion because this thinking didn't go quite to plan. Dad's been really silly, because look, we've got this nice little drawer, this nice little lock, so then you push them down, and it, and it can't open. Yeah, and then you push them again, and you can. Because we've got these nice little caps in here, but look what happens when I over try to open the top drawer. <laughs> so the little ledge for the catch there and there. Because stopping the drop from opening. <laughs> so now we're never going to know there's some secret stuff in there. And we're never going to find out what it is ever. Uh, it's all our spices. We just can never have anything spice. spice can never have any again. food and flavour ever again. As well as a home, I must remember that this is also a boat. And as such, there are lots of boat jobs still left to do before we can go sailing. Howdy, doody, good morning. Uh, right, got a day today, uh, got Ben coming, which is cool. It's the first time Ben would have been back on the boat uh, when it's floating, for those who don't know. Ben is our electrician. He helped to design and he's done most install work on all our big electrical setup. But it's great having Ben back. I'm really excited, one, to get him on board and see, see the progress we've made, um, which would be nice. Also, it's good just to have someone to work with again, to bounce ideas off and that sort of thing. And actually having him booked in, coming to spend time with us means the boat's cleared, Kevin and the kids are out, and it's something maybe, you know, despite the cost of having him here, actually the benefits of having him here, not only his time, but the benefit towards us as a family, having that real focus, this is the time we're gonna work. So it may well be, I'm gonna have a chat to him about how much more we can get him in, how many other jobs he might be to help with. Luckily, we haven't got the kids today. Because, uh, with ben, Ben's help, we've turned this into an absolute building site, which is a matter of minutes. <laughs> As always. As always. Look at this. It's all my bed. It's all good. It's all good, man. We're rerouting the starter batteries. We've decided to keep two of them. There's three originally. So we've still got about four kilowatts worth of, uh, of, of lead acid on board as well. But that's just for running now for gear and for starting the engine and eventually the gen set. Remember that issue that we had with the bow thruster not working? Well, it turns out... What you found, Ben? Um, a bit of an air gap. You found an air gap. Yeah, so the bow thruster's not working because we have a wee cable. <laughs> so with the boat jobs done, it was back to thinking about domestic issues again. So this lack of a washing machine is getting pretty silly now. Um, Kelly's got 20 quid in coins which she got out yesterday, ready to do a big wash today. But like, that's another 20 quid at least that's just going to disappear on washing. I The reason I haven't got the washing machine plumbed in yet is I want to sort out a proper grey water tank which the washing machine is going to empty into and then that's going to be connected to the 24 volt pump which is then going to pump back over to all, all that stuff. But that's a bit of a faff which is just, it's taking me time to think about the pump, where the sump tank's going to go, all that, and it, my brain's just getting fuddled. So we're just going to do a very simple fix. I'm going to run the back of the washing machine straight into the seacot and the the skin fitting that's already there in position ready to go and i can plumb that straight on water type um and all and then i've got a cold feed of water going straight to the back of it that is a job as a uh, quick bodge fix job i could do hopefully in less than an hour 
and we have the washing machine up and running, then we've just got to plug the thing in. Um, and the only thing about that, I mean, that, that will last for as long as we want it to. The only thing is I've got to shut the seacock um, when we're sailing. It means we can only use the washing machine when we're either anchor or stationary in a marina, which is probably when we'd use it anyway. I'm not gonna, at the moment, we're not doing my big long passages that last over a week that we need to wash. So I'm just gonna do that as a quick fix for now. So let's see, let's see if I can do it. It's uh, 10 o'clock now, going out in about an hour's time. Can I get the washing machine plumbed up in that time? And it's operational, and then I can source out this. Heat up your hose. Means it'll go over the, uh, whenever it's gonna go over, a bit more easily. Get the Jubilee clips. So that's the one we're gonna use for the washing machine. This one needs getting rid of. But for now, just so we can wash our clothes, I'm gonna leave that bung in more pipe heating and more pipe fitting. Outlet from the washing machine connected. Comes out the washing machine through a hole in the wall to that joint there, down to the seam fitting. With that connected, that's water out. I also need to check it's not going to leak, but I can only test that when it's running. Now we're going to sort out water in. This fix on the uh, washing machine to get it up and operational is not going to be fancy but it is going to work. It includes this. It's an old hose pipe that came with Esperance and we don't want to use it for drinking water because we don't know how old it is and how gross. But the reel's good, so I'll keep that. And uh, I need about, of, uh, about a metre of this. I've got tools, tools coming out of my tools. That'll do. The final piece of the puzzle. It'll do the job. Half inch BSP to a fitting that'll fit. It'll be fine. There we go. So water out's connected, water in's connected. All I've got to do is plug the washing machine in. Having said that, I do need to do that thing you're supposed to do with washing machines where you've got to unbolt the things at the back. So basically the standard washing machine installation. So I'm gonna open up the drum. This was inside it. At first I wasn't worried about it. I was just gonna stick with my basic uh, water in through a hose pipe, but it has got a built-in filter, which might be important. Anyway, so in my effort to continue not spending any money, I found a couple of little attachments and I can attach that to the hose by that, which is what I'm gonna do now. And then the water let inlet is done. I hope you're all excited as I am. I'm just about to open the isolation valve so water can flow back through to the aft part of the boat. That includes the aft sink, the aft shower deck, and the washing machine, yeah! So I'm gonna turn that on now, check for leaks. Hopefully it's all good, and if so, then I can plug the washing machine in and we're good to go. Are you excited? I'm excited. Yes! <gasps> Exciting, you hear that? Open the valve and the pump pressured up, but it's not continued to pressure up, which suggests there's no leak. But let's go around and check. <sighs> Kel, yeah? I just want to check how excited you are about me plumbing in the aft sink and the, uh, and the washing machine. I'm so excited, I'm going to bed. <laughs> it's seven o'clock at night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm gorgeous. I've been working for days, I'm knackered. I'm quite sure why Kelly's not as excited as I am. So far, everything seems good. Can't see any drips anywhere. I'm just going to test the uh, aft. I don't think I've ever used this. That's cool. We've got a nice little outside tap. Woo! You're supposed to be in bed. No, I'm not. I think I'm just about there. Everything's ready to go, it's plugged in. I haven't turned it on yet. Only thing I've missed off this list is it does go on and on about making sure the machine's level. Um, which it's almost level right now, but it's never gonna be perfectly level because when the boat, there's no like big button that just says on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start pressing things and hopefully something will happen. Uh, no. <gasps> Was that a ding? Was that this? Exciting. Aha. Right, so it says 
first cycle to remove any match from manufacturing debris. Set the cotton program. Cotton program at temperature of 95 degrees. Well, I didn't have that option, but it does have 90. Pour a small quantity of detergent powder into the main wash compartment of the detergent dispenser. Start the program without adding any laundry. Exciting. Two hours, 35 minutes. I'm gonna have to do something to control myself for this time. <laughs> oh, there's definitely water going in. It's like, like, do you guys want to be involved for the next two hours, 35 minutes? I'm not sure we should have something like we can do together. Maybe we should go to YouTube Live for this. Oh, oh, there's definitely water moving. I'm taking the torch. Oh, I can hear the pumps. I can hear the pump in the down the below the floor. There's no water leak in there. No water leak. I think that's quite good for me, actually. Like there's very minimal leaking of water. And we're down to two minute, two hours thirty four minutes. So if you guys could just stick with me, we'll uh, we'll nail this. We're gonna have a great time. You're gonna love it. Well, if you're still watching after all that, well done. You are truly a top fan. So as a little treat, you get to see this little bit of bonus footage. Killers playing Southampton football ground. Can you hear that? Lots of people having lots of fun. 